And we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fifth segment, we are going to be continuing on with the list of NBA free agents that, um, you know, that that are going to be um, or the top free agents going into the summer. Pardon me for my horrible English right there. So. The we left off with Malik Monk, so now we will go ahead and move on to the next player, which is KCP. And I feel like getting KCP now he is going to be a, he has a player option, but KCP he needs to accept his player option if the Nuggets they have a chance of winning another NBA championship. Now they messed up against the Timberwolves this year, however. They still have um they still have the same roster that they do have going into the next season and the same championship roster. So if KCP just accepts his player option, they can easily try and run it back one more time and hopefully not lose earlier in the postseason than they did the previous year. But you know, that's up to KCP and we'll see. Next player on this list, I'm trying to go through this list as quickly as possible. And we are go- coming up like some of the mediocre players i guess you could say so it's like not really again it's a very very big class of free agent players and it's like not everyone is a top player in the league unfortunately as it is this is just my opinion so next is delo he is you know he played for the lakers he did not have a very very good he did not have a very good season in the postseason i should say he did not have a very good postseason but he did play really well in the regular season and you know that postseason performance it was just you know one perf- one or four five bad games like you know it was just a, it was a sample size of five games and it wasn't like he played really well in those five games and it's like you know he's making 17.3 million dollars and he does have a player option I have a feeling he's going to accept his player option even though the Lakers might not want him on the team after selling like he did I mean like he was just horrible in the playoffs it was bad and I don't even want to talk about him anymore. Let's move on to the next guy. And next up is Miles Bridges. I don't want to talk about him. Next uh, is uh, Tobias Harris. Now, I will definitely talk about Tobias Harris. Now, he is the... He is under fire under under the Sixers media. He is definitely one of the scapegoats for the loss between the Knicks and the Sixers. Uh, Tobias Harris was historically bad in the postseason, and he was, it was bad. It was just atrocious. Like, he was a non-factor in several games in the postseason, and he was just, it was almost as if, like, he wasn't there, and, um, it, it was like he just didn't help the team like at all i'm just pulling up his game log right now but like i don't remember him doing contributing anything in the postseason and i believe he dropped zero points in in an elimination game let me just go ahead and make sure yep he ended the game 0 for 2 in an elimination game in between the knicks and he had seven points in game one and eight points in game three And the most points he scored was 19 points. Now, this is definitely like a player that the Sixers don't want don't want to be spending so much money on. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent going into the going into the next season. And I think the um, I think the team should just uh, I think the Sixers should just let him walk. Like after that terrible performance, and they need to let him walk. Otherwise. I don't really think they're going to have enough money to be able to convince Paul George to join the Sixers, which brings up the next player on this list that's most likely going to also be um, let go off the let um, let off by the uh, Sixers is Buddy Heald. Like the the Sixers, they aren't going to pursue him in free agency. I don't think if they have a chance, if Paul George does end up, you know, declining to go with the Clippers now. He like Buddy Heald. He's you know known as a three point shooter, but he shot he shot thirty eight percent from three. Not bad. Averaged twelve points, but no players made drained more threes than Heald over the previous five 
um, seasons, and he was 15th in the associations last se- last season with 219 triples. So, again, another just a great role player that is coming in for the um, for the Sixers, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Sixers end up letting him go in the hopes of being able to get Paul George. Again, that is just the big that is the big dream to have a big three in the Eastern Conference to be able to compete against the big C. Oh, well, that was horrible, but you know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Now, Clay Thompson, he is most likely going to test the free agent market. I've talked about him several times on this podcast and you know, being under contract for $43.2 million and expecting to test the free agency market while looking for similar compensation is going to be a very hard task, especially with the numbers that he is averaging. That is all I really need to say. If you guys want to really like listen to what I have to say about Clay Thompson, you can go ahead and watch some of the other podcasts about Clay Thompson or the individual episodes I do have about him. Now, next is Tyus Jones. Now, he was one of like, you know, the only bright spots in my opinion for the for the Wizards. Now, it really is unfortunate that the Wizards they're paying Jordan Poole all that money and Jordan Poole isn't really um as impactful as I feel like as this player. There is a chance that, you know, the Wizards end up giving him a lot more money because he is an unrestricted free agent going into the next season, but making more than Jordan Poole or making as much, I don't think so. I wouldn't be surprised. I would leave, honestly. I would I would suggest leaving and maybe joining a team like the Spurs so that way you can play with Victor Wembenyama, something like that. Definitely a better option than playing with Jordan Poole. But next is Jonas Valanciunas. Now, he ranks 6th in total rebounds and 7th in double-doubles. Um since being acquired from the Grizzlies in 2021 and he has you know his limitations as a defender but he's developed a great three-point shot he's shooting 30 percent from three as a center that's pretty good and he's been you know a um pretty good presence for the Pelicans towards the middle now the pet the Pelicans they are kind of looking for a rim protector so I'm not entirely sure how Jonas's contract is going to hold up you know he's making 15.4 million this year but we'll go ahead and we'll see how much like um whether or not they decided you know to take the team in a different direction than taking the team in the direction of you know having the um what's it called the option of having the uh a rim protector as opposed to having him but we'll go ahead and we'll we'll see what they do um Coming in from the sports, um, TJ says Jones deserves better than the Wizards. Love the idea of him on the Spurs. Wemby needs a real point guard. Thank you for agreeing with that. I really like. I feel like that's sort of like in his um in his budget and definitely like um also in like you know the Spurs budget because it's like really difficult to convince. It would be really difficult to convince a big time free agent to be able to, especially like when there aren't really that many big time free agents. If you really think about it, um, going into this off season that are like you know young enough and in a good enough spot to like compete with Wemby. So, but next on this list is Isaiah Hartenstein, and this is one that is like it's going to hurt a lot of New York fans because he does a lot of the grit and he does a lot of the things that a lot of players don't really want to do and you know he brings that value to the team he's going to be an unrestricted free agent and again OKC seems to be the landing spot for a player like this and it seems like you know they're going to try and pursue him another player that gets known for doing all of the dirty work is Bruce Brown former Nets legend love the guy great player fantastic rebounder fantastic um offensive mind he won the nba championship with the denver nuggets he was a very important piece to that puzzle a three and d player um he's making 22 million dollars however which is a lot that is a lot of money 
coming in from Bruce Brown. And, you know, he does, this is, um, he's under a team option, which is relatively, which is really rare. And I believe he's the first player on the list that I've mentioned that is on a team option. And he's reportedly, like, the franchise is reportedly set to trade him around the draft after picking up his $23 million in salary for 2024 and the 2025 season. The club has until June 29 to officially exercise the option. And that seems to be like, you know, the next, uh, we'll figure out exactly where he's going to be traded, but you know, that seems to be the next step for him. Next is Royce O'Neal. Now I mentioned him before in the previous podcast saying that he would be a pretty good option to pair up with Kyrie and Luka Doncic, seeing as how, you know, the Mavericks, they're still in need of, you know, they, if they want to increase their role player option, and if they want to like maybe get a better role player, maybe Royce O'Neal would be the pick because, They don't need star players. They need better role players now. So that's an option. He's making only $9.5 million. And his averages aren't really all that. But, you know, he is a 3 and D defender. So I don't really expect your averages to be all that. Next is the one and only light skin himself, Kelly Oubre. He is, you know, a fan favorite for the ladies. And um, seriously, like, look at the demographics. And, I mean, look at his face. But pause. Aside from that, um, he's played like he's on a minimum deal with only two million dollars. I don't know what to, I mean, you know, teams like they might pick him up and they um, I don't know what it is. It's weird. He's been like um, jumping from team to team and um, he's a primarily a defensive wing and he's very efficient around the basket. So it's like I wouldn't be surprised if people would, you know, take that for two million i mean two million and averaging 15 points per game is pretty it's pretty impressive i will say but then again you know there is the inefficiencies that come with that so next on this list we are um running down like you know through this list we have gary trent and oh my god i completely forgot to put another player and the other player that i forgot to put was obi toppin he's also going to be a free agent coming into the uh going into the next season and he is going to be a restricted free agent however so i really feel like the pacers are going to want to re-sign him again so an unrestricted free agent is gary trent jr he is going to um he has a slightly diminished role with the raptors in the last few seasons despite the fact that he's making 18.6 million dollars and he's a good defender. He's a pretty good shooter as well, shooting 39% from three. So wouldn't be surp- he's an unrestricted free agent. Wouldn't be surprised if any championship team would want to get him on the roster. Next on this list, we are reaching the very end, is uh, Markel Fultz. Now, yes, I have Markel Fultz over Russell Westbrook. And... You know, he's had his knee injuries, obviously, and he's, um, I mean, in 158 contests over the last four years, he's averaged 12 points, five assists. He's also much, much younger, which is the big reason why I put him over Westbrook. And not only that, he's Westbrook is not after Markel Fultz either. It is um, Luke Kennard. Now, I feel like Luke Kennard, he brings a lot more value to the team than... Um, he, he also has a team option, so we'll go ahead and see exactly what they do. But he shoots 45% from the three-point line, which is really where his value comes from. He's a great three-point shooter, and he's a great wing player as you know he um, enters free agency dependent on what the Grizzlies do in the draft so we'll go ahead and see exactly like what will happen and what is expected to happen going into um free agency and going into you know the draft and everything of that nature there are other players that i haven't mentioned before there was also um kyle lowry who is also an unrestricted free agent there are also some uh let's see there are also some other players that are also on um different deals that i didn't bother mentioning like uh you know pj tucker he does have that player option also nick batum talon horton tucker james wiseman uh let me see who else on the list um jeff green 
Daniel Tice, Mason Plumley, Westbrook, Kevin Love, all of these players, they all have a player option. And I didn't really bother Andre Drummond. I didn't really bother, you know, including them because I didn't feel like they belonged on a list that was, you know, full of, you know, some of the best players. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. If I, I feel like I'm if you feel like I missed out on some of these free agents, if there were some other sleeper picks that I may have missed out on and I'll go ahead and look at them. But with that out of the way, we are out of time for all of the segments and the fifth segment of the show. So that is it for the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. As usual, please remember to use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every single show segment. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Really helps your show. Makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. Once again, really helps the show. Link is gsmcpodcast.net. That is all I have for you in this <clears throat> in this fifth and final segment. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to...